Hi folks, continuing off last week's Fusion Friday, let's figure out in Fusion how to do this. In other words, as I compress this down, how do I animate or show the motion of these three sliders moving outward? We need some new components. We need the pin inside of here that I said, like I mentioned, has a taper on it. We need the, this whole base piece and then we need the sliders themselves. Right click, new component, base, new component, tapered pin, right click, new component, slider. Let's start with the base. Right click, activate, L for line, I'll sketch on this plane. over, Oop, it's okay, horizontal vertical. Now L for line, and let's put a line across here. Now we'll throw some dimension on this, just, just approximate dimensions. I'm gonna say that the gap has a radius of say quarter inch, and the outside here can be 0.75, and this can be 0.375. I want this to stay on center though. So horizontal vertical. I'm gonna click this point right here. I'm gonna turn my origin light ball back on to let me click right here. See how that locks it in. Now S brings up the shortcut REV for revolve. I wanna revolve this axis around this. So I've created in one fell swoop this piece here that also has the hollow area for my shaft which is radius of a quarter inch or half inch diameter. Now let's create the slots for our three sliders. R for rectangle. Sketch on the end face. I like to just create a rectangle out of place. Sketch point let a point snap in the middle of it. Horizontal, vertical. I want that point to be directly vertically above the center point. Now I can hit D for dimension and say dimension that to that of one inch. We're just doing an extrude, it doesn't really matter. Okay. E for extrude, click it, negative 0.5, 6, 2, 5, something like that. S, keyboard shortcut, pattern, circular pattern. Change the pattern type to features. That's going to let me come down to the bottom of your screen, pick that cut. What's the axis? Select that, and I'm just going to pick the outside of this ring. It happens to default to three, coincidentally perfect. Click OK. So now I've got my three cutaways for the sliders. Activate the tapered pin. L for line. I'm going to sketch on that same plane. And I'm going to hit P for project. Because I want, let's see, do I want to do that? Yeah, I think so. So by projecting that circle on this plane, it just gives me the two points where this circle intersects that plane. What that lets me do is hit L for line. Let's just sketch a line over here. In fact, what we can do is create a rough shape. Oops. I wanted that to be horizontal and that to be vertical. So this is gonna be a 30 degree angle. And we're going to have it be a quarter inch radius. So that's our, our approximate, that is not approximate, that is our shape. But now I want coincident, this line to be coincident with that point. Perfect. And I actually want to create the location of it as well. So let's do this. Dimension from this point over to here of, make something up here. No, point. 
I want the, I may need to just do this. There we go. Yeah, two inches, no, a little longer. Uh, let's see, two should work actually. Yeah, I think so. S for keyboard shortcut, revolve. Revolve that on the axis is he right there. Click OK. The important thing there is I've tried to sketch that in place because what I'm now going to do is activate the slider component. And I will hit R for rectangle. I'll sketch on this face. I'll hit P for, pro well, no, I don't, do I have to? No, I don't think I have to. Just sketch from here. See how you have a, right now it's gonna auto snap to there or it might auto snap to there. Right now I don't want it to auto snap to anything. So by holding down control and clicking, it creates that rectangle without auto snapping on the second corner of it. It did auto snap up here on the first corner. I do want it to be collinear to there. So I'll click this blue line, and I'll click that. The question is going to be how long is this? We'll dimension it for now, 0 0.6 to 5. And we need a little circle in the end to show. Oops, there we go. E for extrude, one, two, three, and I'm gonna extrude that up to object here. So never notice this, how you think, well, come on, I click that face, it doesn't give me the option. Tool body creation has failed. One thing I've learned is a lot of times you have to click a point and not a face. So if I zoom in, I click a, if it'll work here. There we go, clicking that point. Don't know why, but that seems to be what does it a lot of times. So what's important is I wanted this taper to intersect with our piece. So we're just gonna make the extrusion deeper here to show the intersection of these two. I'll go back to the base, activate that, activate this cut, edit feature, we'll say negative, negative 0.8, oops, okay. And I'll activate the slider and we'll make it, oh, actually, huh, it was parametric, great. So what I like about that is it shows, I've got this intersection here, which is important. Although, darn it, I, I want it to be down here more on the tip in its natural resting state. So hold on, let me fix that. Let's pattern these around. Create, pattern, circular pattern. This time it's a component pattern. So what's my component? I'll pick slider, and this is super easy. I just have to pick the axis of the ring. It does three, which is great. The problem I've got is these are too deep, so let's fix that. Edit slider one, I need to cut the groove in it. I'll turn off my base visibility. L for line, sketch a line right here. P for project, I wanna project this. Ooh, it won't let me do it, uh, bummer. Well, I can still do it this way because I know what this angle will be. D for dimension, this to this should be 60. That gives me the right angle. E for extrude, click that. Hide my tapered pin and drag that down through to cut it away. Now, I sh that should, that change should flow through to the other two because they're all linked to each other. So I've got that tapered uh, surface for the 60 degree pin to interact with. Activate the parent. Assemble as built joint, slider between here and here, and we'll click a point. That should be okay. Let's see, I may, this may not work as I was hoping. I was trying to get it matched perfectly up without using, uh, on how it interfaces with each other, but we'll see. I can move my tapered pin in and out like so. Now I need to create a slider joint, as-built joint, 
slider between. Oh, do I want to do an as built? You know, I wish I I would like to. Let's see if it it may cause problems though. If I recall, when I was practicing, I think you didn't have a great. See, it worked here, but then I think when I go to do Shift J is the as built joint keyboard shortcut uh, between this one and here. Oh, that worked. Shift J. Okay, I stand corrected between here and here, on there. Great. So these are now all, oh no, look at that. See that? It was animated correctly, but now it doesn't work. Not a, that's a good glitch, right? So we'll do regular joint, J for joint. I'm gonna pick the, actually the side of the part. So the coin here, and then the in, coin on the inside of the wall actually pushes it out a little, which is fine. Do the same for the next two. I need to create the motion link between our plunger and our three sliders. Well, who wants to go dig out some high school trig? So I've got a right angle here. This is the end of my tapered pin, and we know that this is 30 degrees. Let's say that this is one inch so what I want to know is when I move this down one inch, how far is it moved in this direction? So I have to write this out. So, toa. So opposite hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, opposite adjacent. So I've got this angle. I want the opposite and the adjacent. So that's tangent. So tan 30 equals opposite which is x, I don't know, x over 1. So, so that equals 1 times tan 30 equals x. So all i got to do, pretty easy, tangent of 30.577. Assemble motion link. Continue. So this is what I don't like. This is what I was trying to solve before, as I wanted these two to be modeled in place. So this is a little bit hacky but I basically am gonna visibly align them up. So about right here, capture position this is not preferred. Somebody tell me a better way to do this. Assemble motion link, a motion link between the slider of the pin, and then I have to do one at a time, so I have to create three of these, but I'll say one inch. So when I slide in Z one inch, I want Y to move 0.577. Yep, that looks right. Click OK. So look. Let me turn off the other two so we don't get in the way. I'll even turn off the base. How awesome is that? Let me create the other two real quick. And there we have it. I'll turn the base off just so you can see as we push this pin down and pull it out. So I've got a little bit of, I could do a better job of the alignment of everything here. Folks, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next Friday.